Hi there, my name is Luis and in the next few minutes I will explain to you how to install a chef torque sensor correctly and which options you have. You will also learn how to enter accurate alignment without expensive tools. Here we see one of our torque sensors and next to it a selection of different couplings that can be used for the installation. The important take-home message when installing a chef torque sensor is that couplings are required at both ends in every case. Otherwise the lifetime will be reduced or even worse. Disturbing forces are measured besides the applied torque. In the next step I would like to show you the two different ways to install a torque sensor. The first option is the floating installation. In this mounting position the sensor is fixed only on the two shaft ends. Here it is important to use half couplings. With full couplings the sensor would sag. An example for a half coupling is the single disc coupling. For the floating installation of the sensor some restrictions need to be considered. The maximum speed of the sensor is limited to 3000 rpm. In addition the sensor must have twist protection against rotating. Because of these restrictions we recommend fixed installations for our torque sensors with their mounting base. For this installation we must use full couplings. For example double flexible couplings, bellow or claw couplings. The advantages are that the weight of the sensor has no impact on the measurement as the sensor is fixed on the mounting base. This brings another decisive benefit and the possibility to mount the sensor horizontally or vertically. Furthermore, the sensor can be accelerated up to the specified maximum speed and loaded with the maximum nominal torque. The challenge with this installation is that the alignment between the shafts of the sensor, load machine and specimen must be very accurate. In the best case, a laser is used which provides the best results and enables high precision torque measurement. Nevertheless, also with a few tools an accurate alignment is possible. All you need is a caliper hex keys for screws, depth gauge, gauge block and angle ruler. On my little test bench I will now show you how you can do it. First step is to measure the correct diameter of the specimen and load machine shaft and both ends of the sensor with the caliper. This is necessary to determine the center line. Next step is to measure the height of all four shaft ends with the depth gauge. We can check the height with the gauge block and angle ruler. When no difference is visible it is good. Please use the same reference point to define the position as for the y-axis. Use therefore a gauge block for the difference between the feather key and shaft. Please measure on each shaft on four different points to go sure that the alignment is correct. After alignment is completed, the first coupling can be installed either on the load machine or the specimen. Then you can push the sensor's shaft slowly and carefully into the coupling. In some cases the own weight causes the coupling to hang down a little bit. This is not misalignment and can be corrected by manually pushing the coupling into position. After the installation of the sensor you can check your installation easily with the torque signal. Please check with a very low and constant speed if the torque signal shows constant values. If you see a strong sinus signal the alignment is not correct and should be corrected. A strong wave is a signal of mechanical strain caused by misalignment or tensions in the drive shaft. I hope this video was helpful for you. Feel free to check our other videos you can find on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions feel free to contact us.